So we just finished frequency polygons, and now ogives are another type of frequency polygon, except they're a cumulative frequency polygon. And when we say they're like a frequency polygon, I'm basically saying that they're a line graph, okay? So ogives are another kind of line graph, except they have this word called cumulative in there. So we're gonna figure out what that means. So it's a line graph rather than a bar graph. It uses class boundaries on the x-axis, like histograms, okay? And it uses the cumulative frequencies or total as you go for the y-axis rather than the individual frequencies. And this little box right here has nothing to do with the graph. It seriously is just talking about um, how to read the graph. So how we read this. So if we were to look at like this data point right here and we follow it to the y and x-axis, what we're saying is that 70 of the values fall less than 55, 50.5, excuse me. So what we're saying is out of the total 80 data points that we collected, 70 out of the 80 values fall less than 50.5. Well, what's this graph talking about? This graph is talking about ages of best actresses, okay? So we're saying 70 out of the 80 best actresses that we found are less than the age of 51. That's basically what we're saying when we read these graphs. So this box has nothing to do with like how you need to graph it. It all has to do with how to read the graph, okay? So when we're creating our ogive, or our ogive, excuse me, you do not have to put in the box. That's just telling you how to read an ogive, okay? Okay, so let's try an example for o ogives. So remember ogives use, we're using the same um, data set that we did last time. So it's those record high temps, sorry. Okay, so ogives are um, using the boundaries on the x-axis like histograms and they use the cumulative frequency on the side. So we want to count up. Okay, so I'm going to go by threes again for my tick marks, okay? And then um, I'm going to label them so I start at the origin with the leftmost bound point, which would be 99.5. So if you look in your class boundaries, the leftmost point or this starting value starts at the origin, which is right there, okay? And then after that, you just follow down this column, 104.5, 109.5, 114.5, 119.5, 124.5, 129.5, and 134.5, okay? And then um, we have to go up all the way to 50. So I skipped one and went by, uh, so like I went every two and went by five. So like skip one five, skip one 10, skip one 15, skip one 20. You can see from the picture, okay? And so then we have to plot our points. So remember whatever um, lands here is what we're plotting for cumulative frequency. So if I look at my tick mark at 104.5, I'm going up two. If I look at my tick mark at 1. 9.5 I'm going up 10 and then at 114.5 I'm going up 28 119.5 I'm going up uh, 41 and then I'm going up 48 for 20 above 20 124.5 and then 49 and 50 and you want your graph to continually go up because it has to according to this cumulative frequency chart so if it dips down you know that you went wrong somewhere on an ogive okay so connect your points and then don't forget to label. So our x-axis is temperature, our y-axis is our frequency again, and then of course our overall um, title for this whole thing is record high temps because it was the same example that we did. Okay, so that's all that I have. So just make sure you get to understand the subtle differences um, between these two because you're gonna, for your homework assignment, you're gonna try to make both, okay? So I want two examples of an O drive and I want two examples of a frequency polygon and if you have to reference back to this video to figure out what you use in those um, frequency distributions that's what you're going to have to do okay so I want to thank you all for taking good notes and hopefully you get those four problems done and I'll see you soon